Hello everyone and welcome back to our monthly time travel. Today we are going back in time to June 2018 to take a look at the monthly favorites from back then and see how they have fared over the last two years. And as always, I try very hard to recreate the same makeup look I was wearing in that video, um, same earrings and same outfit if I have it. Change the outfit a little bit, but same color scheme. Alrighty, everything will be listed in the description box in the order in which I mention it, including the link to the original video if you wanna go check that out and take note how I look different from two years ago. In 2018, I started with non-beauty favorites, so let's do that. The first favorite from June 2018 was a TV show, Southern Charm. So now I am recalling the circumstances behind this. I had just injured my knee, I was not entirely mobile, and I sat on the couch or laid on the couch and just binge watched. I don't remember how many seasons they were in at that point, and I really enjoyed it. Fast forward to 2020, if you're a Bravo fan, you know they've been having just a few issues. First there was COVID, then there was just disgusting behavior on some of the cast members, and I couldn't care less if they bring the show back or not. But that's kind of how I feel in general about a lot of reality TV. I'm losing my taste for it more and more each week, each month. So Southern Charm, no longer a favorite. A book series that was and still is a favorite also takes place in South Carolina, in Charleston, is the, let me get this name right, it's the Liz Talbot Mystery Series. They all start with the title Low Country because that's how they define that part of the world. And then Low Country Boil, Low Country Bookshop, things like that. Well, it just so happens, now we'll fast forward two years, that the last book in the series is coming out at the end of this month. So if you have not yet in, had a chance to enjoy this wonderful mystery series that's set in present day in and around Charleston, then I highly recommend you start with the first book and you will be able to read all the way through this month. A favorite from 2018 was The Ideal of Sweden. It was a, it was a phone case and a magnetic ring that attached to it and I did really like it, but then I discovered pop sockets. So this is my current one, and I just like the options on this a little bit better. I was under the impression that a pop socket didn't pop all the way flat and make it easy to get in and out of that back pocket, but it does, and it makes it super easy to sit and watch YouTube videos, which is what I generally do as I'm getting dressed. I think that I, what I really wanna do is get a loopy case and then, and the loop is I think higher up and then still put a pop socket on it. But in any event, I really enjoy pop sockets. I've had a few, they, I've never had one fall off and um, I get mine on Amazon. So I love these. Another favorite from 2018 was Sarah from Hot and Humid. She is an influencer that I can't remember when we first met. It was at a reward style conference and we just clicked. And since then we've become much closer. We've gone on a trip together. We text probably every single day in our group text and just one-on-one -on -one. we text quite frequently. And if I still go to the reward style conference in August, she will be one of my roommates. So definitely still a favorite, favorite person. And if you aren't subscribed, and I shouldn't say subscribe, she's mostly on Instagram. If you don't follow Sarah on Instagram or subscribe to her blog, you really should fix that because if you're looking for someone who has just an effortless sense of style, it's a, she's a real mom, down to earth, affordable fashion, a ton of Amazon stuff, Nordstrom loft. I like how she dresses better than how I dress, but you'll, I think you'll really enjoy her. So go check her Instagram out. And then I had a favorite shoe and it's still a favorite shoe. This is the Tory Burch Bima. And what I like about it is it's a wedge espadrille, but the wedge is not too high. But what I especially like about it, which is hard to see here, is that the strap is not a buckle, it's Velcro. So really easy to get on and off. They come in and out of stock. They are still available in a few places and I'll link that below. But there are some budget, more budget, I should say, friendly options that have come out since then if you like the concept of the Velcro strap on an espadrille wedge. I think the newest version of this is a little bit improved in that the sole of the shoe or the inside sole isn't this espadrille material, it's lined. So if you're concerned about this feeling weird on the bottom of your feet, you don't have that problem anymore. Then in 2018, I talked about my purses of the month and I just wanna laugh because Boy, have times changed. First of all, where am I going? The grocery store, It's pretty much it. Although tomorrow night, I'm meeting friends for happy hour dinner for the first time since 
early March, late February, I think. So yay, I can wear a different kind of purse, but um, I don't have any favorite purses of the month. The favorites from then, the first was from Gigi New York. It was the Abbott Crossbody. And I can't remember if it's currently in storage with my spring summer purses that I haven't bothered to get out yet because spring kind of didn't happen around here or if I gave it to a friend. So I no longer either have it or have current access to it. The other two favorites I do. The first is this also GG New York bag. It's the Zoe crossbody. It does come in other materials. This is like a canvas linen type feel and I love the round purse trend, which is still around. <laughs> and I like this neutral beigey linen fabric, the tassel, but what I really like is it does have an outside pocket that can fit my iPhone. More like if I go like that, but it also zips at the top. It has an interior slip pocket. It's a great size little purse. I love it. And then my other favorite from 2018, which I still like it. I wish I hadn't bought it when I did because obviously now they've improved it and made it a true crossbody is my, it's kind of caved in because I just took it out of storage that I did have access to in my closet. Um, the Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 and the Damier Azur. I have a little bag charm attached to it that does not come with the bag. Um, it's beautiful. I do carry it quite a bit in the summer months. I'm sure I will carry it at some point if I leave the house to go somewhere other than the grocery store. But it hasn't gotten any love in a very long time. And now we move on to beauty favorites, which was a much longer list than I, I think I usually go for. So the first favorite was the Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm. And I will admit, I did not go back and rewatch my own video, mostly because it is painful for me to watch myself. I mean, I have to do it while I edit and that's bad enough, but to watch it again, plus I live through it. But I don't remember which Fenty Beauty Gloss I was talking about. The original is Fenty Glow and it it's beautiful and I love the scent of it and it has more of a nude brown, I'd say, tone to it. But then my favorite, just because I tend to not like brown lipsticks and beige lipsticks is the Fussy color. I couldn't remember what it's called. I know they've released more since then, but I do love Fussy and I reach for it all the time. And it's beautiful on its own. It's beautiful over lipstick. It's just, and oh, the smell. I, it just smells so good. It, it smells edible. Love the Fenty Gloss Bombs. Still love them. Probably should add some more to my collection. But then on top of that, in 2018, I had some drugstore favorites and they're still favorites. All of the Neutrogena Hydro Boost lip glosses. This is not all of them. I think I have another one somewhere. I know I have a coral one lying around somewhere as well. These are beautiful. These have a sheerness to them, but they do have a good amount of color and will, depending on which color you go for, add color to your lips. I'd say if I had to pick a favorite, probably this pink one. And then there's a coral one that I have no idea where it rolled off to. Those would be my top two. But my current favorite, not just drugstore glosses, but one of my all-time favorite glosses are the Milani Keep It Soft. I don't even know what they're called. Keep It Full. Keep It Full Lip Plumping Glosses. I have a small selection here. I know I have more somewhere in my collection of lipsticks. I started just getting overwhelmed by the amount of products I had and just started dumping them in a drawer instead of sorting them. So that's a project coming up. If I had to pick one favorite, I would say Soft Rose. There is a very, very faint, soft, sweet smell, nothing like the Fenty Gloss Balm. So if fragrance is an issue for you, you might prefer this one over the Fenty. And another reason, and I've mentioned it before, that I love doing these videos is I rediscover products I forgot I had. So I guess two years ago, I bought this foundation. It was all the rage. It's the YSL Touche Eclat All-in-One Glow, and I bought it in my summer shade. And by summer, I mean fake tan, because I could lay outside all day long, every day, and my melanin just does not activate when it's exposed to sunlight. And I completely forgot that I had it. And I smelled it and it appears to still be good. So I'm gonna give it another go. It does have a floral fragrance to it. I do love this. It's a very lightweight foundation. There is a glow to it. So I think now I'd prefer to powder it a little bit more than I used to back then. Preferences change and I just don't love so much the dewy radiant look in High summer when we're hitting, yesterday we had 110 degree heat index or higher. So no, I don't need to add glow. I'm good. So setting powders were big in June of 2018. And it's funny because I loved the Hourglass, it has a very long name, Veil Translucent Setting Powder. Okay, it's not that long. And it's nice, it's good, it's fabulous. However, 
I don't know why I'm showing this to you. You can't see anything. It does lend some glow. It has some shine to it. It's not 100%, it's not matte. It's radiant, it has a radiant finish. And like I said, I don't, I don't want any more radiance unless I specifically pinpoint where I want it with highlighter. So I've been shying away from this. I like this more in the winter months. One that's a little less glowy, but still does have some glow to it that I like very much is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Powder. Yes, Magic Powder, just making sure I got the name right. But I have found myself reaching for a classic. I have so many of these deluxe sample sizes of the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder that I haven't bothered to repurchase a full size in a really long time. I'm actually gonna combine these two into a small container and then once I'm out of that, I'm going to purchase the big size. This is a cult classic for a reason. It sets my makeup so beautifully without adding color, without adding pigmentation, but it reduces the shine without making me look matte. Still a favorite from even before 2018 and in 2020, it is a favorite again. Some skincare that I was a huge fan of and I still like. It's not that I don't love this anymore, but I tend to reach for a different product. It's from Peter Thomas Ross. I have to smell this. It's their pumpkin enzyme mask. Oh, I mean, there's not a ton of this left. I don't even know if this was the original. I don't think this was the one I had in 2020. I think I this is a newer one, but there's not a lot of it left. This is a great kind of resurfacing sort of mask. It's a gentle exfoliant. It has physical and chemical exfoliants in it. I prefer to use this right before I get into the shower, put it all over my face, let it do its thing, and then hop in the shower to rinse it off because it's messy, but the smell is fabulous and your skin will be glowing and beautiful. What I prefer to reach for, I just actually got a new, um, re not replacement, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, I guess a replacement, a refill, is from Colleen Rothschild, and this came out, I guess, within the last year. It's her Micro Mineral Resurfacing Scrub. Let's unbox it. This is what I reach for now. It's a little less messy. It's not, I don't think it's fragranced. And it's just, it, it's a physical exfoliant, which I'm not, I used to not love, but because this is so gentle, it's just fabulous. Tiny, tiny, tiny little mineral beads in there. It's the finest of fine grit. Again, same concept, all over the face, avoid the eye area, and I usually keep this actually in my shower because it doesn't have to sit on my skin. I can just put it on, rub it a little, rinse it off, baby soft skin. It's, it's just amazing. I love the micro mineral line that she came out with. Then a self tanner favorite, and I still do like it, I've just started playing with other ones, is the Mind Tan line, specifically their coconut self tanner, and that is all used up. My current favorite, and can you tell how bronzy I am? I'm being facetious, but for me, this is bronzy. It's a recommendation from Sarah, hot and humid. How funny is that, that she's made an appearance again? It's the Isle of Paradise self tanning drops. I have them in the shade medium, so this is what medium looks like on someone who's very fair skinned. I actually just placed an order for the deep, and that should be coming later this week, so keep your eyes out and we'll see how that works on me. This is just the most user-friendly tanner. I don't even exfoliate half the time before I put it on. I just do a full dropper with a tiny little pump of this body lotion. It's from Neutrogena Hydro Boost. This is just weird. I was not, you know, I'm just looking at the description box. I have the old, from the 2018 video, I have the Hydro Boost lip glosses. Now I have the Hydro Boost body gel cream. I really like this cream. It's not scented. It has no color. Um, it does have hyaluronic acid, which is nice and it just mixes really well with these drops. So I usually do like about a halfway down pump of this with two dropper fulls per leg, not drops, dropper fulls per leg, one dropper full per arm and like torso. Don't put it on my face. And we're gonna talk about that because in 2018, my favorite for the face was the Clarins Radiance Golden Glow Booster. And it's nice and it does a great job but it's a little less user-friendly than my new favorite, which you've heard me talk about before. It's the San Tropez, I just call it the facial mist, but it's the Self-Tan Purity um, Bronzing Water Face Mist. I just keep this right at my uh, sink, and usually first thing in the morning after I've washed my face, I just spray it. The nice thing is you can spray it over fully set makeup. And because it's a fine mist, there's no line of demarcation. It just sort of blends into your hairline, down your neck, your, wherever. So I love this, very, very user-friendly. You cannot overdo it with this. Another skincare favorite back in 2018 was the Colleen Rothschild Vitamin C Treatment. 
and it's nice. It's not that it's a bad treatment, but the main ingredient, the version of vitamin C is not L-ascorbic acid in that formula. And so it works to an extent and then it sort of plateaued for me. It's not as effective as the L-ascorbic. I had always thought I couldn't use the gold standard version of vitamin C. I'd had reactions to so many products that had it, but um, I did try the SkinCeuticals CE Ferulic, which is outrageously expensive, unfortunately, compared to the Colleen Rothschild. But the good news is it works. It works really well. My skin loves it. And I don't care how much it is, I'm gonna keep buying it because it's that good. Looking at this, I can't even, I don't even know what happened to this. It was the Tatcha, the Pearl Moonlight. It was like a under eye cream corrector treatment. Again, it was very glowy. And at this point, the glow under my eyes just makes all the fine lines just look that much more prevalent. So not currently a fan. I just use my regular eye cream in the mornings. It's the Colleen Rothschild um, Complete Eye Treatment. I think we've recently talked about this over on my channel um, when I did my eyeshadow palette tag. Favorite from 2018, still a favorite. The Too Faced Sweet Peach Palette. It'd be hard to pick out of all their palettes which one is my favorite, but this is definitely in the top three. It's such a user-friendly palette with so many beautiful neutrals, but with pops of color that are very wearable. This olive green, these more plummy tones, There, you can just do a lot of looks with this or just stay on this side um, or just hop over into some brighter peachy pink shades. So there's a lot going on in this. It's not just a very banal, I guess, uh, neutral palette. There are some variations in this and I love it. And I do love the scent. Oh, it's like, it brings back childhood memories of Strawberry Shortcake and her friends. And then the last favorite, and still a favorite, especially this time of year, are these foundations from Vichy. They are the Derma Finish um, Corrective Fluid Foundation, 16 hour wear, broad spectrum SPF 30. I have it in Opal, which is my regular shade, and then I have it in Nude, which is my summer shade. I This is a thicker foundation. I do prefer to apply it with a beauty blender to kind of thin it out a little bit, but this stuff holds up to humidity, heat, sweat like nobody's business. So if you have an outdoor activity coming up or an outdoor event, I should say, and you need something that you want to hold up and it's not going to melt off your face, this is the foundation for you. This wasn't mentioned in my favorites in 2018, but it is something I was wearing and the coincidence that I happen to have chosen to wear the same nail polish at the same time, this was not planned. This is the Essie on the list a pretty soft corally peach but what I wanted to mention was a new top coat I've loved the sesh feet um, rapid dry or quick dry top coat as long as I've been doing my own nails at home like as long as it's existed it's been my favorite top coat it does dry really quickly in the bottle it thickens up in my one of my recent Beautylish orders I did order the new sesh Vive top coat it's the instant gel effect top coat comes in this blue bottle and I just reapplied it over my manicure that was getting a little old and it's so shiny. It's shinier even than the original Sesh Feet. I don't feel like it smells as strong. Hang on. No, it is not nearly as strong a scent as the original Sesh Feet. This stuff is fabulous and it dries just as quickly. So if you're looking for a great top coat to use at home, just over a regular nail polish or regular manicure, pick this up. It's outstanding. So that's it for going down memory lane. I love to hear from you. Did you have any favorites from June of 2018 that are still around? Are you agreeing with any of my picks for 2020? Please let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate that you made that choice to spend some time with me. Hope you continue to do that. If you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. In any case, thanks again, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.